today, we do have a wonderful speaker. And we have the speaker, Kelly Leibold. Now, Kelly Leibold has been a member of the Pine Island Club for four years and recently joined Hiawatha's Club to expand her reach and involvement. As a new area director, she finds this role to be an incredible learning experience. Kelly serves as the executive director of the Pine Island Area Chamber of Commerce and currently sits on the Pine Island City Council. The skills she learns in Toastmasters help her navigate her community. Her speech today is titled, The Power of the People. Please help me welcome Kelly. Great. Thank you so much, Suzanne and fellow Toastmasters. I appreciate you all being here tonight and giving me the opportunity to tell you a little bit about my story and how I got to where I am today. Now, I want you to take a moment and think about what the word power means to you. When you hear power, what do you think of? You know, you might think of a strong athlete, maybe a politician. You might think of a powerful spell that a wizard could cast. I will throw in here that my friends have recently started playing Dungeons and Dragons, so I had to throw a wizard joke in there. But when you think about the word power and what power means, we tend to think of it on an individualistic level, right? The power our particular person or organization has. I'm sure that you all know by this point in your life that there are some things you simply can't do alone. It's a team effort, right? And the fact of the matter is we're stronger when we work together. So tonight I wanna to take the opportunity to introduce you to some people that have inspired me and remind us all the power that lies in the people. Now I'm going to be sharing my screen on and off to show you some blackmail photos through the years. So let me go ahead and share my screen, power of the people. So to start off, we are gonna introduce you all to high school Kelly. I graduated from Penn Island High School in 2014, but when I started high school, I was a completely different person. You'd be surprised to hear that I was very shy in high school. I didn't take it upon myself to go, you know, talk to strangers or do a lot of, you know, I never did sports or anything. So I thought, you know, what can I do as a timid high school student to step outside my comfort zone and sort of put myself to the limit, right? And so freshman year of high school, I decided to join a bunch of clubs and these extracurricular organizations really motivated me to make the most out of my high school experience. Now, I decided to give everything a try. I was in FFA, I was in DECA, I worked with the yearbook, but two particular organizations near and dear to my heart were Speech Team and FCCLA. And no, that was not just alphabet soup. FCCLA stands for the Family, Career, and Community Leaders of America. And you can see that picture on the right those bright red blazers, that was our official dress. Now, FCCLA is an organization similar to FFA or DECA called a Career and Technical Student Organization, where they use career and technical education to introduce students to all of the possibilities that lie before them once they graduate high school. Now, the thing that was unique about FCCLA as an organization, besides the bright red blazers, of course, was that the organization was student-led. I'm gonna go ahead and stop sharing my screen for a minute. Now, FCCLA being a student-led organization means that the student members or the student officers sort of decided how the organization ran, right? We got to choose what workshops that students attended. We got to write the schedules for the conferences. And as student officers in this organization, we had the opportunity to meet other students from other chapters, regions, states, and we got to participate in other conferences. That particular picture I showed you in our gorgeous bright red blazers was taken in Washington DC at a conference called National Leadership Conference. We had the opportunity to learn about what career and technical education is, what Perkins funding is, and how you give that elevator pitch or you talk about your organization. And at the end of the conference, we high school students had the opportunity to meet with our legislators or their staff members and educate them about career and technical education and why this organization was beneficial to us. Similarly to FCCLA, speech team was just an awesome opportunity to see what my fellow students can accomplish. I participated in a variety of different categories in speech team, 
I did the more fun creative ones like creative expression. And then I did the more serious ones like great speeches. And whenever I would be sitting in a round in a speech meet, I was just astonished by the content and the delivery of other speeches that my fellow students gave. It really reminded me that there was so much I as students could do and so much potential for me to capitalize on. Now that picture that was on the bottom, and I will share my screen again, that picture at the bottom is two of my, you're not supposed to pick favorites, right? <laughs> but these are two of my favorite teachers. The gal on the left, Megan Schimmick, was my biology teacher. And the gal in the middle, Mary Bakeberg, was, a was my fifth grade teacher, and she recently retired. Now, I was getting to the end of my high school experience, right? And I was really bummed thinking that, well, once I graduate, I'm not going to have anything to do. So instead of these high school extracurriculars I was involved in, I looked out to the community. Now, these teachers grew to be good friends of mine. And the gal in the middle, Mary Baker, my, my fifth grade teacher, said, hey, there's this organization called the Pine Island Image Committee. And so I said, sure, that sounds like fun. <laughs> and when I joined the Image Committee, I learned all of the good work that group did throughout the community and what they did to help promote the town. When the Pine Island Image Committee was formed back in 2010 or 11, their main goal was to promote the image of the town, right? So they helped put together welcome signs as you would drive into town. They established a free bike share program. And then the Image Committee transformed into sponsoring annual events. This particular picture here is from the first annual Winter Fest. Now, the year that I joined the Image Committee was the year that me, Megan Schimmick, and Mary Bakeberg, along with other Image Committee members, decided to start a Winter Festival so there was something to do in the middle of January. Winter Festival was a full day of different activities around town. There was snow golf, ice fishing, cardboard sledding, and at the end of the night, we had groomed ski trails that we'd light with special luminary candles from the DNR. And it was an awesome opportunity to see different community members come out to this event that we helped organize. Throughout my various involvements in high school, I learned how you put on an event, how you carry out a community service project, and those things I could not do by myself. I cannot run a full winter fest by myself, and so I needed the support of the whole image committee to put this event on for the full community. It was once I graduated high school that I started attending city council meetings for fun. I know, you can laugh at me. I started attending city council meetings for fun just to see what goes on and what they talk about and how those things may impact my life. And that transitions us into life after high school, Kelly. I will stop sharing my screen for a minute. And once I graduated high school, as I said, I started getting very involved in the Pun Island community. I was on the image committee, of course. I also joined the Cheese Festival Committee and I was a member of the Pine Area People for the Arts. It was around that time in my life too that I joined the Pine Island Toastmasters Club because earlier that year in 2016, to my complete surprise and utter delight, I was asked to interview for a job with the Pine Island Chamber. The Pine Island Area Chamber of Commerce was struggling as an organization they were losing membership. They weren't able to put on big annual events anymore. And so I interviewed for the executive director position to try to revitalize the organization, get more membership, have the chamber be a prominent group in the community again. And between 2016 and now 2020, we have over doubled the membership and added three new annual events that the chamber sponsors every year. So working with the chamber has been an incredible learning experience. But my first few months with the chamber were not great. I didn't know how to conduct a meeting. And one of our chamber members, Jerry Vettel, suggested I join Toastmasters as an opportunity to practice this skill set. And after joining Toastmasters, I got to meet so many different members of the community. Now, when I was involved in high school and those different clubs and organizations, those were all typically people of my generation, right? or at the very least people of my skill set, interest level, that sort of thing. Toastmasters really introduced me to a diversity of different people, different age generations, and made me feel 
more connected to my community. Now, I was hired on to work with the Pine Island Area Chamber of Commerce in January of 2016. And in the fall of 2016 is where things took a turn for the worst. I will turn my screen sharing back on and show you, unfortunately, the not so glamorous pictures. Um, so in the fall of 2016, I was living my life after high school, right? I was involved in my community. I started working at the local Staples in the Copy and Print Center. And you can see in that picture on the left there, that is me and Heidi. Heidi had worked at Staples for almost 10 years and knew the store inside and out. She would be able to point me to the pen aisle and where a specific ballpoint pen was. And she mentored me in the Copy and Print Center too on what does customer service look like? How do you laminate something versus cut business cards versus print a poster? But working at Staples wasn't the most pleasant experience, not because of the work itself, but because some of the physical side effects I started feeling. In the fall of 2016, I would have these random dizzy spells at work. I would maybe be on a ladder grabbing overstock down and have to hold onto the ladder and steady myself. I remember being very nauseous in the copy and print center, having to interact with customers, go run and use the bathroom and then come back and do that. And it was two months of this weird dizziness and vertigo that finally we knew we had to do something about it, right? So my primary care doctor was very confused as to what was going on. She thought maybe I had a misplaced inner ear crystal or maybe it was just vertigo, but unfortunately it ended up being much more severe than that. After a particularly bad weekend at work, I went home to rest for a little bit and I called into work on a Tuesday morning saying, hey, I'm not gonna be able to come in today. That Tuesday night, my grandma and my mom brought me into the emergency room in Rochester and after insistent asking, they took me in for a CT scan. They found a five centimeter mass in the back right side of my head. And that was on a Tuesday. That Thursday, I found myself in emergency brain surgery to remove that tumor. It was one of the scariest moments of my life to have you know, my whole adult life ripped away from me. Couldn't work at Staples anymore. Couldn't live in my apartment in Rochester. I had to move back in with my parents. I'm gonna stop my screen sharing for a bit. And I sort of had to juggle two things at once, right? To learn how to adjust to my new adult life and to learn to deal with all of these treatments and side effect issue, issues, right? So that emergency brain surgery happened right away. Then I was in proton beam radiation treatments for about a month. And then I had five months of chemotherapy following that. And at the time, I understandably was very upset and sad about what was going on around me, but I wouldn't have made it through that time alone. It was because of the support of my family, the support of my friends, my community, you know, old teachers and friends that I hadn't seen in years came to the, into the ICU after I'd gotten my brain surgery to chat and check up on me. If, if it wasn't for that support system in my life, I don't know that I would have had as pleasant of an experience going through everything. One fond memory I have is in February of 2017, I was just finishing my radiation treatments and my chemotherapy was slotted to begin soon. And my mom was very good friends with the guy who owned the theater in Pine Island, his name is Ted. And so Ted said to mom, is there anything we can do to help right now? Can we put on an event at the theater and maybe use the theater to help raise some medical funds for her? And we ended up holding a community benefit in the Old Pine Theater in 2017 there. And I was astonished by how many people came to that medical benefit. I didn't know I knew that many people. So it, it was crazy to see that my life, my one life had touched that many others and there was a community of support around me. You know how they have receiving lines at weddings where the person sits there and is received by everyone. It was similar to that at the medical benefit where poor bald Finn Kelly was sitting there just 
greeting people as they walked by. And at the end of the night, they had a silent auction during the medical benefit itself. And then at the end of the night, they had a musician come in and perform an acoustic set. And they ended up performing an acoustic cover of one of my favorite songs by a band called Fun. And I was totally caught off guard and surprised by that. And again, it reminds me in the power of the people and what the community around me did to support me during those times. Now, by the tail end of 2017, I was done with my treatments and I was learning to live with my new normal. I had to figure out what my body could and couldn't handle. And I eventually moved back into my own apartment, although I <laughs> continue to stay in Pun Island, which has proven to be a good choice in the future. But the having to learn how to do dishes without standing up the whole time or having to use a shower chair or things like that was just very frustrating. And I would not let myself dig myself into that rabbit hole without first remembering the people around me that brought me to where I was. Now I'm gonna share my screen again and pull up some more blackmail photos. And let's see. All right, so now we can fortunately move on to life after cancer. Once I had learned how to deal with my physical side effects, although I would still struggle with side effects and still do to this day, I have fits of nausea, balance issues, fatigue, but I learned to live with those things. And throughout all of my cancer treatments, I still was involved in my community. I would not let cancer take that one thing away from me. And so I continued serving as the chamber director. I would lead meetings where I could. I sent a lot of emails from bed when I couldn't physically be at a meeting. And that involvement in the chamber grew to involvement in the community at large. I joined the ribbon run committee since it was a 5K that they raised cancer funds at. So in that upper left-hand corner, you can see us all celebrating after a successful ribbon run 5K event. And those sorts of activities brought me solace and comfort to know that my struggles do not mean the world is a bad place. And there are so many other incredible people out there working towards similar goals. Now, as I mentioned during 2017, I did as much community work as I was able to while going through my treatments. And then in January of 2018, at the Pine Island City Council meeting, I was surprised with an award. <laughs> Our mayor, Rod Steele, once a year does a program he calls the Pillars of Pine Island. He recognizes half a dozen individuals every year in different sectors, like business, a volunteer organization, and he recognizes them for their work in the community and the contributions they've made to the city of Pine Island. Now in January of 2018, I was awarded with the 2017 Citizen of the Year Award. And at, by this point, I was only attending city council meetings for fun. I didn't expect anything to happen. So to be recognized like that during a city council meeting was a really humbling experience to know that my work in the community didn't go unnoticed, right? So the rest of 2018, went decently well. I was able to still work part-time at Staples, although by summer of 2018, I knew that I couldn't continue working that job. I just wasn't physically fit enough anymore. And so in August of the 2018, I left Staples and decided to do this mainly part-time, typically from home work. It was at that time as well in the summer of 2018 that I had all these nausea spells again and some of the dizziness started to return. And I had, you know, a very brief fear that maybe the cancer is back or something might be up with me. And after some diagnostic testing, we realized that my thyroid was all amok, which wasn't too surprising because the radiation treatment was near my thyroid and potentially messed that up. That's another thing to add to my arsenal of problems I have with my physical body, but that again did not stop me. I'm gonna stop sharing my screen so you can see my beautiful face. There we go. So August of 2018 had those thyroid issues, right? Was having all of these physical problems. But then I remembered that 2018 was an election year. And it was at that point in my life, I decided that I was going to run for Pine Island City Council. 
I figured I was involved enough in the community, knew a lot of the business owners, had good relationships with a variety of different citizens. And I wanted an opportunity to give back to the community that had given so much to me. And so health issues aside, I decided to run a campaign. My family was so helpful in putting out yard signs for me and doing a couple lit drops. And there were four of us running for two open spots on council. In November of 2018, I was elected to Pine Island City Council for a four year term. It's an incredible experience to have won an election like that, to think that, again, the power of the people, this isn't me winning an election, I would not win without the votes. So to know that I'd made such a difference in the community and made these relationships with people made me so proud to sit on city council because again, I can give back to the city, the community that gave so much to me. Once I've sat on city council, I've had a handful of experiences that have really thrown me for a loop or surprised me in that there's so much yet I have to learn. How do you interact with someone in a tense conversation? How do you communicate certain information to the public? When the media contacts you, what do you respond with? And learning from my fellow city council members always helps me get through any experience. My fellow council members have done this for longer, they've worked in the community for longer, and they can help mentor me through the experience of being an elected official, not only serving my city, the community, but my fellow citizens, right? I love engaging with citizens and conversations on what they think about the downtown district or what they think about community relations with City Hall. It's all such important information that you have to be open to listening and hearing and engaging in those conversations. And without the support network around me, I wouldn't be inclined to do those things. Or without the skills I've learned in Toastmasters, I wouldn't be equipped to do those things. And so serving on City Council, similar to this area director role this year has been an incredible learning experience and I'm so thankful for the support of the people I have around me. I'm gonna share my screen one more time for a couple more black male photos. As the executive director of the Pine Island Area Chamber of Commerce, not only do we promote our business and organization members, but we put on annual events, right? So we sponsor the farmer's market every year the chamber sponsors a citywide garage sale event. And COVID this year has made a lot of the events that the chamber puts on very difficult. For example, we can't do our networking nights anymore. And so we've been compiling newsletters to send to our membership. Now when Halloween rolled around, the chamber knew that normally we do this event called trunk or treat, where kiddos can trick or treat from the trunks of cars. The Pun Island Chamber puts a spin on trunk or treat and that each vehicle is decorated as a different business organization. So we promote our chamber membership while providing this event for the community. And this year with COVID as a major concern, we transitioned our trunk or treat event into a drive through trunk or treat. And we didn't know how it was going to go. And so we thought we'd set up our trunks in a drive through alley. And a Goodyear County Sheriff's deputy was there at the event helping direct traffic. There was a line six blocks long of cars waiting to drive into the event at any moment. We had to make three emergency runs to the local grocery store to buy more candy for the kiddos that kept coming. And I had some community members reach out to me and say, hey, we didn't feel safe doing anything for Halloween this year, but this event provided a safe outlet to celebrate. And so we thank you. And I turned around and said, I am not responsible for trunk or treat, right? In part I am. Trunk or treat wouldn't have happened without the support of different businesses and organizations that hosted trunks at the event. The Chamber's next big event coming up is the Holiday Decorating Contest, in which we encourage local businesses and organizations to decorate their homes or storefronts. Then we put together a big map of decorations that you can drive through the community and look at. And so not to jump past Halloween too quickly, my Halloween costume was the most gorgeous ugly sweater that you've seen, ablaze with red sequins and everything. Now, my involvement has started to stem past just the community, not only my involvement in the Toastmasters organization, but I've started to get a little more politically involved. You can see that bottom middle picture, I got to meet 
some of my candidates running for local and state offices. And again, it shows me what the power of the people truly looks like. You don't run for office just for fun, right? You, hopefully, you run for office to represent the people, to listen to your fellow citizens and see what issues are in their hearts and what you would advocate for. I'm gonna stop sharing my screen. And whether it's high school extracurriculars, whether it's my cancer diagnosis and treatment, whether it's this community involvement, different people along the way all helped contribute to the person I am today. If it wasn't for their mentorship, for their support, for their guidance, I wouldn't be the leader I am today, nor would I have arguably had the impact on my community that I've had today. So all of these experiences combined are just really good reminders that when you're struggling in life, when you're going through hardship, you know, you're, we don't expect you to go through this alone. No one's ever alone, really. You have the support of people around you. So don't be afraid to reach out and ask for help. And if you're particularly in a rut somewhere, maybe take a step outside your comfort zone, get involved in someone, pick up the phone and call someone you haven't in a while. And you all must remember the true power that lies in the people. Thank you for the opportunity to speak. Thank you.